Today we're in the season of epiphany. Epiphany is a fancy word that just means revealings. Revealings. January 6th, this past Friday, we recognized the wise men bringing their gifts to Jesus, revealing the newborn king. And so now on Sunday, we fast forward 30 years and celebrate Jesus' baptism. I don't know if you've had a chance yet to reflect on the opening in the bulletin or not, or if you're worshiping with us online or came in at the last moment, but I'll ask the question for you again. Have you ever wondered why Jesus was baptized? He was perfect, without sin. He didn't need to change. He didn't need to be baptized. So why did he? I've wondered this for a long time. So when I was at the seminary, I couldn't wait to ask one of my professors, and so I drilled the first one I could get for more than a few moments. And I asked Professor David Schmidt, why was Jesus baptized? And in true Schmidt fashion, he answered me with a story. He said, I remember a moment when I experienced the power of sheer terror and love. His family went on vacation. He and his younger brother were jumping off a dock into a lake, and at one point his younger brother jumped in, and he waited, but he didn't surface. He waited for him to surface, but he did not. He was stuck in the water, unable to surface because he had gone a little bit under the dock. David didn't know what to do at the time. All he knew was that his brother was under the water and in danger of drowning. That was the moment that he remembered. Standing there on the dock, he felt sheer terror at the prospect of his baby brother dying, and he felt the power of love which impelled him to jump right into the water. And when he jumped in the water, he found his brother's leg kicking in the dark, and he pulled him out. Looking back, he said it probably wasn't quite as drastic in his young mind as it felt at the time, but even today, he said he still feels the power of terror and of love. So often when we think about Jesus' baptism, we want to draw these connections between Jesus' baptism and our own. But unfortunately, this connection is difficult and needs careful negotiation. John's baptism, you see, was a baptism of repentance and not a means of grace. We're told in the book of Acts that those who were baptized by John were actually later baptized again by Paul into the baptism of Jesus. Here from Acts 19, verse 1 through 6. And it happened that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. There he found some disciples and said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, No, we have not heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, Into what then were you baptized? They said, Into John's baptism. And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, Jesus. And on hearing this, they were baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came. In a sense, our baptism and the baptism of Jesus are two different things. And when we look at the baptism of Jesus through the lens of our own baptism, we miss some of what's going on here. And it gets confusing because Jesus himself didn't need to change, didn't need to be baptized. So why did he? And here's where David Schmidt's story clicks for me. It's kind of like that moment on the dock. Jesus is confronted with two things. 
the sheer terror of God's judgment upon all people and the deep love of God desiring to bring salvation. And so Jesus jumped in to save. Standing there on the bank of the Jordan, watching sinners get into the water, their baptism signified their repentance, their acknowledging their sin, and the justice of God's judgment. And so confronted with those who are sinful and dying under God's judgment, Jesus identifies with them and with us, and he jumps right into the waters. Jumps into the waters of judgment to save all people from drowning. And it helps us to truly see how beautiful this is. How beautiful an act of Jesus. If we look at what surrounds this act, this baptism. Matthew records events before and after in his gospel. Before the baptism, the wilderness which is filled with God's judgment. John is preaching the coming of God. The axe is laid at the root of the trees. God will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire, Matthew says. After the baptism, the wilderness is filled with Satan's terror. Satan prowls around like a roaring lion. He attacks Jesus. He takes Jesus from place to place claiming to rule this world and trying to force his reign upon Jesus. And in the middle of these two things, we see Jesus, the one who goes into the waters. He suspends John's preaching of judgment to reveal how he himself will bear it. First, he will bear God's judgment for each one of us before the day when he'll also bring God's judgment upon the world in his second coming. And he's also the one who comes out of the waters to face Satan's terrors. He'll be bruised by Satan with us before he crushes his head for us when he dies on the cross, only to walk out of the tomb three days later. Jesus the perfect Son of God is he who stands on the banks of the Jordan. He sees the terror of our dying under the wrath of God and our sinfulness, unable to pay this debt. He sees the terror of our suffering under the torture of Satan, and in that moment, when the wrath of God and the horrors of hell are about to break loose on the world, Jesus responds with an act of love. He identifies with sinners. Going into the water, he submits himself, himself, to the judgment of God and identifies as God's son so that he might enter battle for us armed by the Spirit against the powers of Satan. If Epiphany is a season of revealings, then how beautiful it is to start our church year looking at Jesus revealed in this moment where he sees our sin and suffering and where he intervenes, where he intervenes to save. As we look out at our world today, from where we stand, we know the feeling of terror. And in fear, we're tempted to gather, trying desperately to create a safe place. But what's revealed today is the heart of Jesus, that when confronted by the terror of suffering, responds with the actions that flow out of love. One who jumps right in. Jesus loves you so, so much. He's jumped right in to save you that you would not drown, that you would not have an unpayable debt, that you might live today, and that you might go out in that life revealing to the world Christ as you go from this place.